Jose Mitzner's Adventures in Paradise. Starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. Nightmare on Napuka. Guest stars, Herbert Marshall, Martin Landau, Fenton Myler, Gustavo Rojo. Okay, buddy, easy. Leg up. Bend the knee. Okay, now. Put it back. You've got it. Are you sure? Well, that's what the book says. Leg back against the abdomen. If the patient experiences severe pain... Well, that's what he experienced, all right. He never experienced anything severe. What do we do now? Easy. We wrestle up a doctor somewhere. In the middle of the ocean? Oh, there must be an island or a, a ship with a doctor on it. A penicillinus of all the lousy. What do we need appendix for anyway? No good to us. Oh, our forefathers found them very useful. Oh, well, if mine was still alive, I'll be glad to mail it to him. ATTK, emergency. ATTK, emergency, all ships. ATTK, this is ATTK calling. Emergency, all ships. Come now? Yes? I think that shirt's off. Mr. Second. Where is he? Now, how do I know where he is? All I know is where he is, and that's right here where he ought to be. I'm gonna raise him on the wireless. You can't use the wireless this time of day. Now, who are you clawing at? Someone else will intercept it. Look, I'll have to risk that. Sackett, if Thompson has been caught... Nobody said... But if he has, they'll be monitoring his wireless. Waiting to receive the message will lead them to the right place. They don't know his call letters. The boat's registered? Don't you suppose they'll check the call letters? How can you be such a fool? Now, look, who are you calling a fool? I beg your pardon. When were you elected to the board of directors around here, huh? I merely meant to suggest that... If he has been caught... Look, I'll worry about that when I know it for a fact. I thought perhaps we might be well advised to make some plans. Are we? Since when do we make plans? You know, I'm the one that makes plans, remember? I'm just as much concerned as you are, sir, about our activities coming to the attention of the authorities. As you ruddy will ought to be. Now go on in there and tell your girl to fix us up some supper, huh? I mean, just because Thompson's a few minutes late getting back here doesn't mean we've given up eating. I'm very much afraid Thompson's been caught. What can we do? Exactly what we've been doing up to now. What Sackett tells us to. It is a $750 transmitter. 
If no one can hear through the static. The Puka, the Poto. The Puka seems to be our nearest landfall. I never even heard of it. Well, let's see, they're French islands. They're called the Disappointment Islands. Oh, that sounds promising. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something. If Napuka turns out to have a doctor on her, I'll petition France personally to have her name changed. <laughs> Our situation is desperate. Look, will you put a sock on it to leave me alone? We must leave this island. Yeah, how? Thompson's got the boat, you doddering old idiot. The natives have dugouts. A fine figure, you can cut paddling a dugout. <laughs> you get far on one, too. We could easily get across the bay to Depoto. A lovely place it is, too. It's uninhabited. We could certainly conceal ourselves there until the island patrol... Oh, conceal? You mean hide, do you? Why? Because Thompson's likely had a bit of engine trouble. He's five hours overdue. It's not engine trouble, and you know it. Now, look here. He's been caught by the patrol. I'm the slightest doubt in my mind that they're on their way here now. I tell you, Sackett, it's criminal irresponsibility to force us to remain, to take absolutely no steps toward allowing ourselves to... Save us! All right! Go on. Get yourself a dugout and hop it. What? Well, that's what you're asking, ain't it? Well, go along and do it. You... you mean it? Yeah, of course I mean it. Go on. Head for Tepoto. Hide in the region till the danger's over. No one's stopping you. Well, thank you. We'll get ready at once. Wait a minute. Who do you mean by we? Well, Glynis and I, of course. Glynis is staying here. Well, naturally, I, I assumed that my daughter would accompany me. Well, you assumed wrong. I mean, go on, run away like a scared rabbit, if you like, but Glynis is staying here on the puka with me. <laughs> Glynis and me, we get along just fine. What do you mean? You and Glynis are getting along just fine. What's it sound like? When you came here to Napoco, I agreed to your proposition with a solemn understanding. Look, I know about the understanding. And you subscribed to it. Well, I cancelled my subscription. I expect I forgot to inform you. I forbid this. Second, I absolutely forbid this. Now, look, just because we're running into a little bother with the island patrol, doesn't mean I can't walk up to that wireless in there and send one message. One message that'll put a noose around your neck. Now, you just remember that. There's a ruddy boat coming. Is it Thompson? No, no. No, it's some breeding schooner. The patrol! That's not Thompson. Uh, come on, inside. It's no patrol boat, that's clear. It looks like a ruddy schooner with some Johnny and Jean steering it. Well, whatever it is, we don't want to hear, not now. Now, look. I want you to go out and have a talk with him. Find out what he wants, tell him he can't have any, and send him packing. I know I can trust you to say what you ought to, and say it right, huh? Now, go on. Just a moment. No, look, I just said... I heard what you said. There's something I must know. Look, I have a mind... Be quiet, please. What is it, Father? Just now, Sackett said something to me. Something I can't credit. It concerned, so he said, you and him. I'll go out and take care of this young man now.
Will you take my bow line? Um, this is private property, Captain. Well, I'm sorry to intrude, but I'm looking for a doctor. A doctor? Yes. Have you got one here? Who said we did? Why, nobody said you did. I thought there might be one. Well, you, you thought wrong. There isn't any doctor here. Well, do you know where I can find one? What about the poto? Listen, I hate to disturb you, but this is an emergency. Maybe it's not all an ill wind. There's a government dispensary on Eretica. Eretica? Nothing closer than that? I'm afraid not. You wait here. Well, Eretica's what, about 80 miles from here? Do you mean to say that... All right, Captain! Drop in for a cup of coffee, did you, Captain? What are you doing? That's a nice, nice bit of ship you got there. How many knots will she do? I hope enough to get me to Eretica before it's too late. Too late? <laughs> that sounds ominous. Too late for what? He's looking for a doctor. It seems his partner's sick. He thinks it's appendicitis. Dear, dear, that's not good, is it? I told him we'd no doctor here. I said the nearest doctor was an Eretica. Well, of course, that's quite true as far as it goes. I expect you wouldn't mind uh, having someone look at your partner now, would you? What are you talking about? Well, I, well, I thought perhaps your father might. Uh, certainly not. Is he a doctor? I thought you said there... No, he's not a doctor. I don't know what he's talking about. Look, Captain, it's getting on for nightfall, and these waters are treacherous no, no, between no. here and our... Glynis, Glynis, old girl, let's not be hasty, huh? Now, you know how it is, Captain. When, when a chap's been living in these parts all his life, well, he picks up a few things, you know. Now, now you take her father. Now, he's not a proper doctor, no, not the car with a diploma hanging on the wall. And, but he's pulled me through more malaria, dengue fever, and snake bites than half those sawbones on Fiji you'd ever even see. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Because he's not a doctor. Linus. Now, look, I give you my guarantee. You ask up and down these islands if the word is a ship or sack, it's not something you can borrow money on from Wellington to Mangareva. Her father knows what he's about. License or no license? Now, come on, let's get the poor bloke ashore, huh? My father doesn't like people looking over his shoulder when he's... When he's what? Examining his patients? He doesn't examine any patients. He looks like he knows what he's doing, but you say he's not a doctor. He's been out here a long time. He's been able to... To pick up a few things along the way. That's what Sackett said. He's also managed to pick up a stethoscope, hasn't he? Captain Troy, if you prefer to make some other arrangements for your friend, go right ahead. I've got a lot of choice, don't I? Then I said yes. Fred, are you two getting acquainted, are you? Oh, yes. We're practically old friends by now. Good, though. That's what I like to see. Is uh, he still looking him over? Yes, but the doctor doesn't like people looking over his shoulder. Oh, well, he's a bit of an eccentric, you know. Oh, no offense, Curtis. Well, you know, nothing personal. And he just, uh, it just doesn't seem to cotton with strangers. Uh, I think I'll go in and see how he's coming along. He won't mind that. All right, young fellow, lie still. We'll soon have you out and about. What's a bigger god? Undecitis. Bad luck for him, eh? No, it was dealt with promptly. What do you mean, dealt with? I shall have to operate. Well, isn't that nice? We're supposed to have ourselves a, a couple of house guests for the next few days, are we? And what are we going to do to entertain them? Let them watch us make up our bales of coffee? If I don't open them, the appendix will rupture. You know what that means. Are you going out of your mind? Do you want them to leave here and tell everyone that there's a doctor in a book who performs operations? But what am I to do? 
Now, why would a man claim he wasn't a doctor if he was? I can't think of a single reason. Can you? No. That being the case? That being the case, if the man claims he's not a doctor, why not believe him? Of course, it's really the daughter who's been making all the claims. Now, maybe... Maybe she has a reason. Oh, she might simply be telling the truth. Has that occurred to you, Captain Troy? Well, we're all of us in luck, chum. Seems there's nothing to worry about after all. You mean it's not appendicitis? Every single symptom I know points to... Many tropical ailments have symptoms that strongly resemble those of appendicitis, Captain. What tropical ailments? Why, I... Well, they, all of them don't have names to them, you know, Captain. You mean he can't think of one? So far as I can see, your partner is not suffering from appendicitis. I can admit myself no other opinion. I believe that his condition will be altered by morning. Well, I don't know. No, wait, wait, what do you suggest, Captain? I mean, surely you wouldn't uh, risk a trip to Aratika tonight. Eighty miles of choppy seas with a sick man aboard one. Not if there's a good alternative. Of course not. Now, I suggest you let him look after your friend for the night. All right, what can you do for him? I'll do my best to make him comfortable. Why, he knows more about native herbs, painkillers, and that sort of thing than half the doctors in Tahiti. He'll have your friend's temperature down to normal by morning, now don't you worry. Well, I guess it's the only thing to do. Exactly. Now, you'll be dosing down on my shack across the way. Uh, hey, speaking of native medicines, I know something that do you a world of good right now. A local cocktail of my own invention. <laughs> I could use one. <laughs> Is it appendicitis? Yes. Can you save him? Only if I operate. The psychic forbids it. Then it's out of your hands, isn't it? <sighs> Inflammation has been known to subside of its own accord. If tomorrow he is better, yes, perhaps I can save him. But if in the morning he is no better, then what? Well, then I shall commit my second murder. Well, here we are, Captain. This, uh... Sofa will have to do for you, I'm afraid. It's uh, not the Metropole, it's silver, but it'll keep the mosquitoes off you. It'll do very nicely. <laughs> well, now let's see about that drink, eh? Tell me about Morgan and his daughter. Well, uh... Uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's not much to tell. I, uh, I think they're Welsh originally. Don't know how long I've been in these parts. I only know them a couple of years, actually. We do a bit of trade in the coffee market. Nothing extensive, you know, but enough to live on. Was he ever a doctor? Oh, dear me, no. Picked up a bit of knowledge here and there. You know how it is. Well, uh, here we are, Captain. Oh, sorry, there's no ice. Well, happy days.
I found out plenty I did. Thompson's dead. That's right. The patrol spotted him. He tried to make a break for it and split the ruddy boat from tip to tail on a reef. Bashed in his own head while doing it. Well, at least he didn't tell him anything. Now look, they're getting a little too close for comfort. We've got to stir our stumps around here. And how's the bloke with a stomachache? He's worse. Worse? Much worse. If he isn't operated on as soon as possible. Will you stop talking about that? Now look, there'll be no operation here. I want him and his friend off this island this morning. We can expect a visit from the island patrol any time now. If he's moved, it'll kill him. Well, let it kill him! Now look, we're not running a, a bloody uh, home for the aged and infirm. We've got our own skins to worry about. Now, where's Troy? Has he come to yet? you give me? I feel like I've been drugged. Drugged? Dear, dear. Second surprise. Oh, the drinks I fixed you. Uh, I should have warned you. They're a bit much if you never had them before. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, never mind. I'm glad I survived. You know, I must have gone out like a light. And you did drop off promptly, I must say. But if it'll make you feel any better now, your friend's greatly improved. Oliver is? That's right. Uh, not feeling up to much, you understand, but uh, well enough for you to take him to Arateka. That's great. Uh, how about one for the road, eh? <laughs> Here we go. Ollie's better, huh? You were right after all. Did you say better? Yes, he's better, isn't he? Well, uh, I told him just what you said, Mr. Morgan. He's still sick, but his fever's down and he can't be moved. Ollie? Ollie? Ollie, can you hear me? You want me to take him to Aratika in this condition? It would be murder. The old man's getting a little slow on the uptake. He can land us all on a jam if he doesn't snap too. Oliver stays here. I'm sailing to Aratika and pick up a surgeon. Just a moment, Captain. Now that seems to be the long way around. It would be much simpler. Morgan to... says it would be murder to move him, and I agree. Of course, Captain, perhaps your idea would. Is right after all. Uh, we'll make every effort to keep your friend as comfortable as possible till you return. Under the circumstances, I think you'd better. How long will it take to our tea come back? Too long. And now. Back to Adventures in Paradise. Should we eat some boiling water? young man. Wait. You asked me something yesterday, something about Sackett and me. I don't want to hear about that now. But you must hear, because you must understand. If you do this, everything is but for nothing. He threatened to tell Fiji who you were. I need your help.
don't think you're doing. My father's decided to operate. Now, look, just who do you think makes the decisions around here, huh? You used to. The guys still do. There have been some changes made. What's been changed? Venus! I'm coming. What's been changed? Everything. I'm afraid I have to do this. I haven't the proper anesthetic. You're the doctor, aren't you? Uh -huh. I know you're a brave man. You set your teeth and you won't shout. On the other hand, you might make a sudden move and that would, would ruin my job. Oh. Huh? I know this won't be much consolation, but bear this in mind. Pain can never be recalled. No matter how unbearable it is at the moment, as soon as it's past, you'll never remember it. Bonjour, Captain. Lieutenant Romain, to a Motu Island patrol. I'm glad to see you. Maybe you can tell me Perhaps where I can... I can tell you a number of things, Captain. First, however, I would like you to tell me certain things. Certainly. What things? To begin with, this vessel is the Tiki, the United States Registry. And you're Adam Troy, commanding? That's right. How do you know that? And you're transporting what cargo, Captain? I have no cargo. This is an emergency. I'm trying to find a surgeon for my partner. Now, look, what's all this about? Why do you check my registry? In order that there shall be no mistake. Captain Troy, I'm now detaining you and your vessel on suspicion of illegally transporting drugs. What? I uh, warn you, Captain. The charge is sufficiently serious to warrant extreme measures, if you're unwise enough to resist. And now, will you be so good as to accompany me? Then you deny, Captain Troy, that at approximately 2.30 this morning, your vessel was making a rendezvous in the Strait of Tangahina and unloading a cargo of contraband chinchonerate. Let me inform you, Captain, before you make your denial, that you were observed. I was observed? Your ship was observed. Let me tell you something, Lieutenant Romain. At 2.30 this morning, approximately or exactly, I was nowhere near the Straits of Fangahina, and I can prove it. Naturally, Captain. I am prepared to examine any proofs you feel you possess. Good. 
Are you willing to take a trip to examine these proofs? A trip? Where? To where I was last night, in Apuka. And what purpose with this uh, voyage, sir? Listen, my partner's very sick. What I told you is true. He needs a surgeon. If you can get one to come along and come yourself, I can prove to you I had nothing to do with the smuggling of a uh, chin chin. Chinchonate. Well, chinchonate, whatever it is. A narcotic derived from the bark of the chinchona tree. It results in loss of muscular control, paranoid hallucination, and ultimately death. Well, what is the basis of your contention, Captain? That your vessel was used without your knowledge and consent? Are you then in the habit of occasionally mislaying your ship? You do not strike me as being a particularly careless sort of person. I think I was drugged. That's him, Sackett, the plantation owner. You will permit me to do the talking, Captain. Bonjour, monsieur. Morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Lieutenant Romain, Island Patrol. Am I correct in assuming that you are Monsieur Sackett? And this is the Mid-Pacific Coffee Company? I beg your pardon? My question, monsieur, was... I understood your question, Lieutenant, but... Well, I'm afraid you've got me mixed up with someone else. Now, wait a minute. Am I to understand, monsieur, that this is not the Mid-Pacific Coffee Company? Well, of course it is. You just have to look at the sign. What's going on around here? Uh, uh, what is your name, monsieur, and, and what is this installation? My name is McVeigh, and I... I raised some jute for the burlap tray. Monsieur McVeigh? Do you know this man? No, I'm afraid I don't. Am I supposed to? Why, you... Now, look here, you. Don't try anything, whoever you are. Whoever I am! Don't waste your time with this crook. Check the nip! Captain, where are your proofs? I left Oliver in his bed, in his room. Suffering from appendicitis, too ill to be moved. Ask the other two. Ask Morgan and his daughter. Uh, yes, I was forgetting. All right, Sankett, where's Morgan and Glennis? Well, uh, who? You know who. Come on. One moment, please. See, McVeigh, I should like to speak to the others. The others? Well, you mean my, my, my native chaps? No, he means Morgan and Glennis. Who? Look, I'm by way of living here alone, Lieutenant. You are not in partnership with a gentleman named Morgan, who has a young daughter. A young daughter? Oh, <laughs> bless my soul, I wish I were. Has he been saying that? Captain Troy, I am unable to discover the reasoning behind this wild goose chase you've brought me on. But I now arrest you on the charge. <laughs> That's a dangerous bit of land, Lieutenant. I, I wouldn't give anyone who's unfamiliar with the terrain one chance in a hundred to get across. I think you are familiar with the terrain. Well, of course I am, naturally. Well, yeah, you will guide us. No, no, wait a minute. You're not going to pursue into the jungle, are you? Have you any objections? Well, uh, no. No, of course not. I mean, the man's obviously a dangerous criminal. Well, then, Benny. At your service.
sense of direction. Cheerio. Navy, if they ever get out of the swamp alive. Now, Troy's, Troy's boat's down by the pier, so there's no one in our way now, so let's get a move on. And what about him? Now, look, we're not running a bleeding hospital ship now. Now, let's leave him where he is. Now, come on, there's no time to lose. No second. Now, look, are you forgetting what you wanted for on Fiji? There's a warrant out for you, remember? For putting a patient to sleep like he was an overage dog. I've been running like one of those dogs for almost four years now. Today, I saved a man's life. I'm not going to run any longer. Now, look, if those Frenchies get out of that bog alive, they'll, they'll run you up a gallows platform. I must take my chance on that. Well, I won't. Who needs you? Stay here and rot! Now look, there's still time. There's still time if we hop it. Are you turning noble too? That's a laugh! What's say we let your old man in on it and we can all laugh? You think I let you hang around here out of the kindness of my heart? Well, let me tell you something. That'll do. I'm not interested in hearing the inventions of a frightened man. No inventions, are they? Get out. Well, you can both rot! I make no demands. If you have done things to protect me, I have done even more criminal things to protect myself. I won't ask you to remain if something stronger makes you want to go. I leave it to you, my dear.
awaiting your death, Captain Troy. That makes my task all the more difficult. Save it. I think I know where the others are. More? Good. Bring us. feel, old man? I'm all right. <clears throat> Listen, you better hurry. Sack is heading for the tiki. Oh, doctor, would you examine him, please? Oh, naturellement. Entendu. Tout de suite. Uh, doctor, there's uh, no need to disturb him. It was appendicitis. I operated on him. You? Your name, sir? Morgan, Dr. David Morgan. Morgan? I have heard that name before. I was head of surgery at Suva Hospital, Fiji. Right the first time, wasn't I? We'll have us at the time we will, sweetie. There's lots of ideas still left in the head of Sir Chevrolet Sackett. Now, come on, come on. This is as far as you go, Sackett. The incision was very good. Excellent, Doctor. There's a need for hands like yours in our clinic at Aretica, Dr. Morgan. If there's anything Ollie and I can do to vouch for Dr. Morgan and Glynis, we'll be glad to do it. You will have that opportunity at the hearing, Captain Troy. I'm sure our authorities will petition Fiji to waive extradition. the next. 
adventures in paradise